What's up guys, welcome to another range day. Today we're gonna to be shooting my FN SCAR 16S SBR. Guys, if you enjoy the content that I'm making, then please make sure to like and subscribe and leave me a message down in the comments section. I hate asking, but it really does help the algorithm a lot, so I'd really appreciate it. And if you ring the bell icon, you should get notifications when new videos are released as well. Additionally, if you wanna get more Chester's Hobbies content, you can follow me on Instagram where you can see what I'm working on and get previews of upcoming videos. And I'm also pretty active on Reddit if you like to follow along with the conversations there. All right, so that's enough of that. Now back to the gun of the day, my SCAR 16S SBR. So the SCAR has always been right up there with the MP5 for me in terms of cool factor and holy grail style guns that I was really excited to own when I finally had the opportunity. I'd seen the SCAR 16 and 17 in several movies and used it in countless video games. I think it was probably using it in Battlefield 4 that really solidified it as one of my favorites. Now technically that was the SCAR H or SCAR Heavy or SCAR 17 which is chambered in the larger and more expensive 762 by 51 or 308 round. But what I decided to go with instead was a SCAR L or SCAR Light or SCAR 16 which is chambered in 556. A much more common and less expensive round to shoot that I was already pretty well invested in at the time. And if you see many of my videos, you know that my primary reason for buying guns is that I like to shoot them. So I went with the SCAR 16 so I could put a lot of rounds through it without any worry. So I originally picked up my SCAR 16S in 2018 as a full-size 16-inch rifle. Now I loved it right away, but there were also a lot of things I immediately identified that I wanted to change. Anyone that's ever looked into it knows the SCAR 16 is incredibly expensive. And while it is an amazing firearm out of the box, there are several things that people often choose to change about it to make it more modern or customized to their taste. Now, the same was very much true with me. I did a ton of research and knew exactly what I was getting into and where I wanted to take things with my SCAR. So the very first thing that I did was replace the standard A2 style pistol grip with a custom Magpul Myad grip from Parker Mountain Machine. The grip profile on the SCAR 16 lower receiver is not a standard mil-spec AR-15 style grip profile, so it requires a little bit of work to get standard AR pistol grips to fit. Parker Mountain Machine sells AR-15 style grips that have already been fitted to the SCAR lower, so that was just an easier way to go than doing it myself. Then I added the Parker Mountain Machine BCD, or battery control device. This functions exactly like a Magpul bad lever, but since a bad lever won't fit on the SCAR, these Parker Mountain Machine BCDs are made specifically for the SCAR and it works beautifully for me. I also added the Parker Mountain Machine oversized magazine release button to help make reloads a little bit quicker and more ergonomic for me. Then I installed this enhanced charging handle from gg and &G, which then goes the charging handle down so you don't slice your hand on the optics if they're hanging over the rail, which my setup does here a little bit. And my first time out with this gun before installing the extended charging handle, I did cut my knuckle a little bit on the EOTech, so that's definitely an upgrade I'd really recommend. Then I installed two QD sling points from Kinetic Development Group at the front and rear of the gun to use my Savvy Sniper sling in either a single or two-point configuration. For optics on this one, I went with an EOTech XPS 2-0 and an EOTech G33 3 times magnifier setup. I love the classic EOTech reticle, and I thought this sight setup fit perfectly with the SCAR aesthetic. Of course, I did pull these sights off another gun, which is why I didn't go with FTE. I don't really mind the two-tone black and FTE look on top of the 50 shades of FTE, personally. The three times magnifier works great with some pretty clear glass, and it's really satisfying to flip it to the side and back again as needed with minimal effort. So that's pretty much what I did initially. I ran the SCAR like that for about a year, and then in 2019, I started getting into SBRs. At that point, I figured I might as well make my SCAR the best that it could actually be and the closest to what I had seen in movies and video games. So once the form one was approved, the first thing that I did was swap out the factory 16-inch barrel for a factory OEM FN 10-inch barrel and gas block setup. Then I installed the Picatinny rail extension kit from Parker Mountain Machine, which allows my rails to extend to the end of the barrel, which gives me extra leverage for my support hand with the Troy vertical foregrip that I installed. I absolutely love both the form and function of this setup. It feels and looks awesome to me. I know a lot of people like to go with the Parker Mountain Machine rail delete or M-lock conversion kits for a more sleek and modern setup. And I totally get that. For me personally, I'm still kind of a fan of quad rails, and I think they still look and feel great to me on the SCAR. Then I replaced the stock SCAR trigger, which is essentially a mil-spec AR style trigger, with the Geisley Super SCAR trigger, which is absolutely phenomenal. Phenomenal. It's very similar in function to the Geisley SSA E trigger for ARs, but specifically built for the SCAR, and I love it. It's got a really light and crisp break with a very short and tactile reset. So while I was making the decision to SBR my SCAR, I also placed an order for my Dead Air Sandman S that I now use on all my 5.56 rifles. So to make sure I could run that once it got approved, I installed the Dead Air SCAR Flash Hider, which actually aligns with the muzzle crown instead of the shoulder of the barrel. Since the shoulder on the SCAR is rather small, and doesn't really give traditional muzzle devices enough surface area to reliably lock up against. I often like to run muzzle brakes on my rifles to help control muzzle movement and keep my sights on target, but I have a couple guns with flash as well, and I typically find that if I'm doing my part, I can still keep them on target pretty well, just takes a little bit of extra effort on my part. Then lastly, I ordered a bunch of Parker Mountain Machine stainless steel gas jets so I could fine tune the unsuppressed and suppressed performance with my ammo of choice. I honestly don't remember which one I ended up using because I bought a bunch and just kept swapping them until I found the perfect combination. I think I ended up using the 1.8 millimeter, but I'm not positive. But either way, it really made a big difference on how smooth this rifle shoots, both unsuppressed and suppressed. When I first made a conversion to the SBR, I noticed that the 10 inch barrel was just a little bit over gassed, so swapping out the gas jets really helped in that regard. So that's really it for changes, guys. Now, aside from those things, I love the SCAR flip-up backup iron sights. They're some of my favorite iron sights that I've ever used, and I have them set up in an absolute co-witness configuration with my EOTech. I know a lot of people seem to really dislike the SCAR's infamous Ugg boot style stock and opt for something more like an ACR stock instead, but I actually really like it. I find it to be pretty comfortable and functional. I don't really mind the look personally. The charging handle is incredibly smooth and fun to actuate, but my SCAR 16S is the older model with the reciprocating charging handle, unlike the newer models that finally include a non-reciprocating charging handle. That was definitely a factor for me when placing my vertical foregrip. I wanted to make sure that it was far enough out on the gun that my 
hand wouldn't get in the way of the charging handle and cause a malfunction under fire. I also tend to prefer having vertical grips pretty far on my handguards anyway, so that works out fine for me, and I don't really mind the reciprocating charging handle too much personally. It's sort of part of the unique scar charm, I guess. I run a lot of AKs as well, so I'm pretty used to reciprocating and charging handles personally. The main gripe that people typically have is the proximity of the charging handle to your support hand and how easy it can be for the two to collide in a bad way, which I've taken care of on my rifle with a Parker Mount Machine extended rail kit and vertical foregrip setup. Now, a lot of guns have come out over the years that people like to refer to as scar killers, or guns that they believe are better than the scar or a better value than the scar in one way or another. The scar has a very iconic and reliable short stroke gas piston design, and there are a couple other big players that have risen up in recent years with some pretty impressive short stroke gas pistons of their own, specifically the Six Hour MCX and the CZ Bren 2. I'm actually going to be filming a comparison video of all three of those guns very soon, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how they stack up against each other. If that's something that interests you, then make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it when the comparison video drops. So that's what we got going on today, guys. The scar is absolutely iconic in my opinion. I haven't shot this one in quite a while, so I'm really looking forward to it. Let's hit the range and see how my scar 16 S SBR performs. So guys, I want to give you an idea of what the SCAR-16 sounds like unsuppressed versus suppressed with the gas block adjusted to the suppressor setting. So I'm going to start off here with two shots unsuppressed slow fire into the pumpkin. And then I'm going to cut over to two more shots suppressed with the Dead Air Sam Man S attached and the gas block adjusted to the suppressor setting. Again, two shots slow fire into the pumpkin. So let's start off with two shots unsuppressed.
All right, guys, this gun is phenomenal, honestly. I'm really looking forward to comparing it to my MCX and my Bren because I actually think it's going to be really difficult to declare a winner in that one. But just talking specifically about the SCAR for now, I shot 260 rounds today with perfect reliability, which is exactly what I would expect. I am right on the edge of reliability with my Wolf Gold 556 brass case ammunition when shooting unsuppressed. And towards the end of the session, there were a handful of times that the bolt didn't lock back for me on the last round of the magazine, but I'm not too terribly worried about that. There were no issues at all with cycling the entire time. The recoil impulse is extremely smooth and pleasant on the SCAR. No doubt some of that is because of the weight, which in this configuration weighs 9 pounds, 3.9 ounces without the suppressor attached. Now, 10.6 ounces of that is the EOTech G33 magnifier. So I do take that off sometimes to save a little bit of weight when I don't feel that I need it, which makes it about eight and a half pounds at that point. But I'll also say that the recoil impulse is very unique with the SCAR. You've got a really big, heavy bolt moving back and forth the entire time. And the way I have mine tuned right on the edge of reliability, the bolt's actually moving fairly slowly. So you almost feel a very quick double clunk, if that makes sense, of the bolt moving to the rear and then slamming forward to load the next round. I will say that it was much more noticeable before I tune it with the Parker Mountain Machine gas jets, but it's still a very interesting and unique feeling recoil impulse. Now when shooting the gun unsuppressed with the flash hider, there's really no concussion at all because it's just a flash hider and not a muzzle brake, but there's definitely more muzzle movement primarily up and to the right as a result. It's also really, really loud, which is definitely to be expected with a short 10 inch 5.56 barrel because I really don't think you reach full powder burn in a 10 inch barrel, so there's a lot of excess gas escaping with every shot. That said, with the Parker Mountain Machine extended rail and the Troy vertical grip, I found the scar really easy to control unsuppressed. It definitely takes a lot more effort on my part than when I'm shooting a gun that has a muzzle brake of some sort, but it's definitely completely manageable. And the speed at which this gun can shoot is greatly enhanced by the Geisley Super Scar trigger, guys. This is one of my absolute favorite triggers that I've ever shot. It's simply phenomenal. It's nearly identical to the Geisley SSA E trigger that I have in my Battle Arms SBR. It's absolutely incredible. I just love it. The Parker Mountain Machine BCD works fantastically for me. Makes it really easy to lock the bolt back when I need to, and then to drop the bolt with my trigger finger on a fresh magazine. I'm just running the stock safety, and it actually works great for me. It's a nice 45 degree throw. I think it's a little bit high, particularly on the right side, but it's perfectly manageable and serviceable. I love this Parker Mountain Machine extended magazine release. It's extremely comfortable, but I will say when I'm running around doing drills and keeping my finger on the side of the lower receiver and away from the trigger, this magazine release just happens to be exactly where my finger wants to naturally rest, which is great if I'm trying to reload, but if I'm not trying to drop the magazine, I did have one or two times I accidentally dropped or almost dropped the magazine. So it's really a me thing or a training thing, but it's something to keep in mind. My favorite Magpul grip is typically the K2 grip, but I loved running the Myad on my scar today. It's a really thick pistol grip and it fit my hand really well. I gotta say guys, I love this scar Ugg boot stock. I know a lot of people think it's ugly, but for me, it's really functional and extremely comfortable, has a great cheek well, and feels excellent against the shoulder. These QD sling points from Kinetic Development Group work great for me. I ran my Savvy Sniper sling in single point configuration and had no issues at all today. It was really, really comfortable. I had a lot of fun running the EOTech Optic and Magnifier combo today. Although the holographic reticle can play some tricks on me with my astigmatism, I still really like the circle dot reticle a lot. It's a lot of fun to run. Even though I didn't use it the whole time, it was also really fun using the G33 magnifier, flipping it up to help me with a long shot and then flipping it back to the side to engage a close target. I also really love how the magnifier works with the SCAR's backup flip up iron sights. It's just a really tight fit with everything that really seems like it was made to be. The GG and G enhanced charging handle felt excellent to me. It was really, really smooth to operate and it kept my hands away from my optics, which I really appreciated. But guys, I really have to say running the scar suppressed is where it comes alive, especially with the Parker Mount machine gas jets. It is so smooth to shoot this gun suppressed, which in a way is really kind of perplexing because FN specifically says that you void your warranty if you shoot this gun suppressed, which honestly makes no sense to me at all because they actually give the gun a suppressor setting from the factory, which in my opinion is fantastic. I wish more companies would do that. Both my CZ Bren 2 and SIG MC CX Virtus did not come with a suppressor setting from the factory, but the SCAR does and they don't support it. It's so weird, guys. I don't understand it. I know maybe they're concerned about the fact that they can't control what suppressor or muzzle device you're mounting. And I guess I get that, but guys, this gun is really made to shoot suppressed and I really wish they would support it for the civilian market. But with all that said, the gun is phenomenally built and I just run it suppressed anyway because I don't expect anything to go wrong. And it is fantastic suppressed, guys. The recoil impulse is extremely smooth. It's very flat shooting, noticeably flatter shooting than when shooting it unsuppressed with the flash hider. But I will say I did notice some gas when shooting rapid fire. It's mostly that I smelled the gas more than anything. It didn't bother me at all, but I think it's essentially escaping from the top of the Ugg boot stock from what I can tell. The gas is extremely noticeable if you have the cheek riser up, which lends some credence to my theory. But I did learn a while ago, if I'm shooting suppressed, keep the cheek riser down. It's a much more pleasant experience. So guys, that's my SCAR-16. It's an extremely smooth shooting gun, an incredible suppressor host, even though FN apparently doesn't want you to do it. And although the quad rail ergonomics and aesthetics could be considered dated, for me, I just think they feel and look awesome. I absolutely love this setup. It's definitely one of my favorite guns to shoot, and I can't wait to compare it to my SIG MCX Virtus and CZ Bren 2 MS SBRs very soon. So that's going to be all for today, guys. We've got a lot more videos coming up soon, including more ARs, AKs, PCCs, handguns, and shotguns. Remember to like and subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned, and thanks for stopping by.